how are new and used car sales doing right now? Well, big gains were seen for U.S. sales in September and in the third quarter, but affordability, meaning higher than desirable vehicle prices and crazy interest rates, are a drag on the car market. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here to share this updated automotive news report with the help of the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Liz? Well, I think car buyers are growing weary of the unrelenting pressure of high car prices. But there's another trouble afoot too. Analysts see the annualized sales rate slowing to 15.4 million in Q3, down from the 15.6 million projected in the second quarter. And interestingly, the UAW strike is not playing a factor as of yet. True. Analysts looking at the third quarter vehicle sales in the U.S. believe that there is an outside group whose coordinated actions are starting to take a serious bite out of what would otherwise be a more robust market recovery for the industry. But it's not the UAW folks with the picket signs that are doing it right now. Not yet anyway. What's hurting the most is the Federal Reserve's Open Markets Committee and their stingy bond buyers and stingy auto lenders <laughs> who have collectively, as of this week, pushed average new and used vehicle interest rates to their highest level in 23 years. Highest in 23 years? That is not something to be proud of. This is according to data compiled by Cox Automotive. That's pretty stingy. Yeah. This has really been one of the most substantial changes relative to what we were expecting. Cox Automotive Chief Economist Jonathan Smoke said on a call with journalists this week, we were expecting interest rates to have peaked and at a minimum not go up anymore. But instead, yeah. we've seen upward movement in August and September. In September 2023, Edmunds.com listed the average car loan interest rate for August at 7.4% APR for new car loans and 11.2% APR for used car loans. That definitely puts a new car out of reach for many people. That's the average. So yeah. those with lesser credit paid a lot more. And yet, despite the average new vehicle monthly payment sitting at $770, that's up from $650 a month a year ago, and the average monthly lease payment is now at $586. Consumers and fleet owners kept buying new vehicles in September and the third quarter, thanks in part to the increased inventory. But the sales rate continues to slow from where it was earlier in the year when interest rates were lower. This means dealerships will continue to be hungry for sales. So you hardcore negotiators out there, keep that in mind. And friends, if you are a buyer right now, I'm telling you that you'll need to have a lot more cash down than you might be thinking. Seven seventy dollars a month is just ridiculous. Liz hit the nail on the head, friends. So if you're in the market, bring more money to the table and develop a hard-nosed approach if you don't already have one. With the adjusted outlook on the seasonally adjusted annualized rate, quarterly figures include an estimate of 1.28 million sales in September. As Liz mentioned, the third quarter sales rate slowed from 15.6 million in the second quarter. Cox Automotive nevertheless updated its annual forecast for 2023 with a range of 15.3 to 15.4 million, up from an earlier projection of just 15 million. Besides Cox putting these projections out there, S&P Global Mobility estimates that September sales at 1.3 million with a SAR for the month of 15.2 million, and they note that the daily selling rate continued to slow in September from the rates seen between March and July. Meanwhile, Edmunds estimates third quarter sales at 3.94 million vehicles, up 16% from a year earlier, but down 4.1% from the second quarter. Jessica Caldwell, Edmonds' head of Insights, noted the fundamental role affordability has played in slowing down new vehicle sales and noted that automakers are now dipping into pent-up demand from earlier inventory constraints to keep sales brisk. Edmonds puts the September SAR at $15.35 million. Pent-up demand is keeping the industry afloat. If it wasn't for that, we'd be in for a rougher ride right now, Caldwell said. If you think about it, the lower rates over the last decade or more kind of subsidized consumers' move to larger vehicles. But we're now seeing a definite difference in people looking at more inexpensive cars, and those lower-cost vehicles under 50000 are selling a lot quicker. It's not just interest rates and prices that are hurting sales of bigger vehicles, but have you noticed gas prices taking another big jump everywhere? everywhere. Yeah. While all of this is going on, incentives continue recovering, and that's largely in response to inventories recovering. Inventories sat around 2 million in September, according to estimates, and sales incentives have continued to grow, albeit rather slowly. Cox Automotive's Jonathan Smoke said, the blue sky of the summer has now become a lot more cloudy, and that defining characteristic of recovering new vehicle production, leading to growth and new vehicle sales, and now looks as if it has some challenges ahead. 
Smoke continued to say, affordability has actually improved so far this year because as new vehicle supply has started to recover, incentives have started to grow, prices have come down modestly, with a lot of it related to just simply returning to discounting and also improving the mix of the vehicles. But the gains on affordability Smoke is referring to are definitely not dramatic and some households have been priced out of the car market still. To Liz's point, in a recent survey of intended buyers, Cox said, 37% of respondents were delaying a purchase or a lease of a new vehicle with the top five reasons given related to finances in some form. The same consumer survey found a majority of respondents, 57% said new vehicles were not affordable, with 24% calling them somewhat affordable and 83% saying they believed new vehicle ownership was completely out of reach. Oh, wow. A heads up for viewers, Global Data's Schuster said incentives will continue to remain historically low, until we see a pullback from consumers. So, viewers, it's up to you. Stop buying and you'll see incentives increase much faster. Schuster continued, Automakers can put some deals on segments that aren't moving, but overall, unless we see significant movement in those areas, it has priced a fair number of people out of the new vehicle market. A lot of people are holding on to vehicles now, and that makes it hard to get a good read on where pent-up demand is. You've constrained or shrunk the market from where it would be normally because of affordability. So what's the historic UAW strike impact right now? The UAW strike against all of the big three, General Motors, Ford Motor Company, and Stellantis, which began September 15th, hadn't had much of an impact on sales yet, analysts say. But the longer it goes on, the more likely it could start having an impact. I think one of the reasons it hasn't hurt so far is that many of the dealer principals that we've talked to around the country have increased their stock pretty significantly leading up to the strike. They saw it coming and beefed up their inventory. Right. Joe Langley, Associate Director of S&P Mobility, said the UIW's strike strategy aims to gradually intensify pressure on the manufacturers in the coming weeks with more plants expected to strike. With the three plants already on strike, along with the related effects of the impacts on other facilities, our current estimates of daily losses stand at just over 4,000 units, assuming straight-time production. Further UAW strike actions could ultimately lead to cumulative losses reaching hundreds of thousands of units. Cox noted that industry inventory is currently 40% below where it was during the last Detroit UAW strike, which was just against GM in 2019. Fleet customers have been able to restock some of their depleted inventory this year as production levels normalized, meaning automakers could redirect that supply to keep retailers stocked if a resolution isn't found between the Detroit 3 and UAW, said Charlie Chesborough, senior economist at Cox Automotive. Chesborough noted that all three Detroit automakers have seen substantial fleet gains this year, perhaps giving the automakers a relief valve if and when the UAW strike spreads further. It seems likely that if there is an expanded strike and it is starting to impact supply, the Detroit 3 could very likely cut back on some of these fleet sales that they've got scheduled in order to keep their retail dealers' shelves stocked a little bit longer. I guess we're going to see what happens, won't we? In the meantime, keep your pencils sharp and your negotiating tactics even sharper. Not only should you be expecting new car deals well below MSRP, but you should be pulling back hard on dealer fees. Dealers don't have the flexibility of demanding such unreasonable additional charges out of their customers anymore. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back and see one of our all-time most popular videos, still very relevant today, 11 Fake Fees. Don't get burned by this stuff, friends. Also, if you need to beef up on car buyer resources, make sure you visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com. There are tons of free resources there for all of you. And friends, we've recently been bogged down with a ton of local community activities and promos going on, like our Extreme Machines event we just did for area kids. So we're sorry if we've been a little slow getting back to some of you. Expect to hear from us soon if you shot us a message recently asking for car buying help. And if you just recently joined the Homework Guy channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to the many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth, justice, and transparency in the car business and always will. We We gotta gotta go. go.